new map trailer just dropped and it looks stunning. We will be getting this map called Mercury on Thursday. I'm going to play the trailer real quick and if you have already seen it, feel free to skip ahead. After this I got more exciting news for you regarding new maps, new factions, Firestorm updates and more. Wow, I mean it looks pretty damn cool, but we'll have to see how it really plays when it launches. And just quickly, in the background I got some Boris AT Rifle gameplay here where I try to be a little bit more mobile and see how I do with it. I think it's still underpowered but in certain situations I was able to make it work. Alright, I got a few pieces of news for you today. Since we are on the topic of Mercury, here is the layout of the map as shown here by Temporal. Currently, it will be a standalone map with multiple game modes including Breakthrough, Conquest, Frontlines, Domination, Outpost, Squad Conquest, and TDM. And then this map will also be coming later as part of a new grand operation. Day 1 and 2 will be fought on the map coming in the next chapter called Merida. And the 3rd and 4th day, if we get to that point, will be fought on Mercury. Then it looks like we are also getting a new mode called Invasion. Coming in the future and perhaps it will be an alternative to Grand Operation. Just like Grand Operation, it may feature more than one day of battle. The description of the mode states, All out warfare, defend your resources and destroy enemy resources. Destroy enemy resources while protecting your own, eliminate enemy troops and resources to win. It is a 32 vs 32 mode with 2 rounds per map. First day may include airborne and then the second day may feature conquest or breakthrough type game mode. Not a whole lot of details about this mode for now. It is also unclear whether this is one of those temporary game modes or a mode for the Pacific Theater and beyond. We'll have to wait and see. Then as the fall of this year approaches, we already know the Americans and the Japanese are coming to the game. Now with the screenshot from Temporal, it is even more clear. So what we have in the game right now is basically allies and axes. With the new factions coming in, it appears that they have separated the forces out and called them by their country. The United Kingdom, Germany, US Pacific, and Japan. With this, I'm guessing they are going to separate soldier and vehicle loadouts, so it's going to be very unlikely that you can use a German tank on a Japanese team, or a British tank on the US team for example. Regarding weapons, I'm not quite sure what DICE is going to do. I think more people would prefer that DICE does not implement a faction based weapon system. But what do you think? Would you mind being able to use an STG-44 on the Japanese side for example? Let me know down in the comments section. As for cosmetics, I am not sure what they are going to do with them. There are some US soldier outfits in the allies part, but perhaps they will be taken out and put into the US faction. That we'll have to wait and see. It is also interesting that the United States faction is specifically listed as US Pacific. Does that mean that we won't get to use weapons or vehicles that the US didn't historically deploy into the Pacific Theater? Or does that mean that there will be a US faction for the Western Front later? What do you think? Alright, then next up, we have some news on Firestorm. DICE originally presented Firestorm as a more ruthless mode where once you die, you stay dead. But this might be changing. The recent patch has shown that DICE might be working on a respawn system like the one in Apex Legends. This is a photoshop screenshot of what this can look like. It appears that the respawn point may be tied to some objectives and you'll have to capture the objective or perform some action to call your teammates back. Perhaps you can jump out of a plane that flies around on the map again, but some details may point to the direction where you simply just respawn next to your teammate like in the multiplayer mode. Either way, 
Take this as a grain of salt for now. Then we have a few data mined images for you to see. First up, we have the Sherman tank with customization. The customization is apparently different than the one in single player campaign, so that's wonderful. But hopefully we get tank customization soon. Come on guys. And then we have a few new pieces of models here from the leaks before. Some may be tied to the 5v5 mode, but from the left to right, we have the Type 89 Grenade Discharger, also known as a knee mortar, used by the Japanese. Then we have the TN-17 Radio Jammer, a new grenade called the Hawkins Grenade, and a double barrel flare pistol. Then on the right, we have the Goliath Track Mine, also known as a Beetle Tanks. They were mostly used by specialized Panzer and Combat Engineer units. More than 7,000 of these were made in the war. They carried around 60 kilograms of explosives and were used to destroy tanks and buildings. In the game, it has roughly 2.5 times explosive power as the AT mines. Overall, it was not a very good weapon in the war, but I can imagine it being a pretty funny gadget to use in the game. Anyway, that's it for now. If you enjoyed this and would like to be notified for my next upload, then hit the bell after you subscribe. Otherwise, thank you for stopping by and have a wonderful day.